Hey there, welcome to the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. I am your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking saltwater pontoons and what you need to know. There's so many people that are getting into the pontoon world in the saltwater market at the coast, and there's so many things that you need to know that are critical. Actually, there, there's a few things that you need to know, but they're very, very critical. We're going to share those with you today. Let's look at what we're going to cover. So we're going to talk about how to tell a saltwater pontoon from a freshwater pontoon. We're going to talk about saltwater and galvanic corrosion, one of the biggest issues that comes up when you're putting aluminum in saltwater. We're going to talk about how to handle if you're leaving your pontoon in salt water for the season, we're going to talk about maintenance and cleaning and a danger that you need to know about. So as you know, we're brought to you by Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. You can pick up your Boat Buyer's Toolkit for free at BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. It's a very valuable tool for anybody that's looking at buying a new or used pontoon for salt water or fresh water. So take a look at these two images. One of them is a saltwater boat. One of them is a freshwater pontoon. Which is which? Well, the, the answer is it's nearly impossible to tell just by looking at the outside. It has to do with a few simple changes that they make uh, and some things that are, we'll say they're under the radar, uh, under the the just the surface of things. And it's very important if you're looking new to talk to the dealer. It's very important if you're looking pre-owned that you actually dig into the belly of the beast and look at the details of the boat, compartments under the pontoon, the motor pod. You want to look at all these little details because if you make the wrong choice, you can be in for a world of hurt. And if you take a freshwater pontoon that doesn't have the proper uh, protections, you are going to be very, very disappointed uh, shortly thereafter. So let's take a look at what makes a saltwater pontoon a saltwater pontoon. Well, the first is they have what's called a sacrificial anode. Now they can be aluminum, which are becoming more common. It used to be zinc anodes was the way to go. It depends on if you're in salt water or brackish water, but most everybody right now is using aluminum in salt or brackish. If you're in just salt, sometimes you'll find a zinc anode. What is an anode? Well, an anode is a sacrificial piece of metal. When that galvanic corrosion happens, when two dissimilar metals are connected, they can cause corrosion and one of the metals starts getting eaten away. The, the, I don't know if it's softer, but the more, the more susceptible metal starts corroding and starts kind of going away. So what these sacrificial anodes do is they're designed to be the metal that's going to go first, the, the weakest uh, or, or the most um, uh, susceptible metal will just start kind of dissolving and going away. So instead of it eating the aluminum pontoons or instead of eating the gear casing on your lower unit, instead of eating another metal, that sacrificial anode is going to be given up and it's going to start disintegrating, disintegrating. Once it gets to about 50%, you're going to want to replace it, put a new one on there so that it continues to attack, that corrosion continues to attack that anode it's very key and if you put your boat in salt water this is something that you need to have and need to make sure that you maintain and keep an eye on if your boat has lifting strakes in a keel which most of them do especially as you get into the higher horsepowers you want to make sure that the lifting strake is sealed you'll see the picture on the right with the x it is the lifting strake is that little triangle that comes off kind of the side uh, two thirds of the pontoon um, that gets the boat to come up on top of the water. It start it lift it like a lifting strake on a, a regular boat, uh, but it's just welded onto the pontoon. In a freshwater boat, they just leave those open. Water can flow through it, and it works just fine. Well, in salt water, what happens is you get that salt trapped in that little compartment. You can't get it rinsed out, and now that salt water will begin corroding and pitting that aluminum and causing major, major problems. Same thing with the keel. 
Oftentimes that keel is just a, a metal triangle piece that goes down the, the bottom center of the tube and it's just open on a freshwater boat. Well, in salt water, you need that to be closed off and it needs to be a solid metal keel where no water can get in and there's no chance of that salt water being trapped and causing corrosion and causing damage. Another thing that some manufacturers use is they'll add a stainless steel fuel water separator to um, to help keep fresh gas getting into the engine. And then the least important, but what most people just look for is that saltwater decal saying saltwater series, saltwater edition. That is the least important piece of it. These other three areas are key because if you don't have that sacrificial anode, your pontoons are susceptible to corrosion and pitting and guess what happens when water starts getting in that tune? Your pontoon doesn't float so well. Same thing with the lifting strakes and the keel. Because they're attached to that pontoon, that corrosion can start causing major problems, including that pitting and corrosion and taking on water in your tube, which is never, ever a good thing. So let's talk a little bit about sacrificial anodes. In freshwater, they typically use magnesium. That's the, that's the metal that works best when you're dealing with freshwater. Brackish water, aluminum, salt water, zinc used to be the main metal, and now they're moving towards an aluminum uh, sacrificial anode. So this is a, I, I took this word for word because it's, it's important to know as a pontoon owner in a salt water environment, galvanic corrosion can occur if dissimilar metals are in electrical contact. The contact may be direct or by an external pipe, wire, or bolt. If this if the dissimilar metals are insulated from each other by a suitable plastic strip, washers, or sleeves, then galvanic corrosion cannot occur. So if you separate those metals with a little plastic washer or a sleeve and you, you avoid that direct contact, you can avoid a lot of the galvanic corrosion that happens. When they first started putting pontoons in salt water, they weren't doing these things in the construction and they would have two dissimilar metals, a brass and an aluminum or a stainless steel and an aluminum that were directly touching or connected by um, a, a pipe or connected by a wire or connected by a bolt of some sort. It caused major problems and the, that's where a lot of the issues with pontoons and saltwater came about. Over the years, they've improved this, but it's something to be cautious of. If you're putting a boat that is a used boat and you don't know exactly uh, what's been done to it, maybe they, they added their own depth finder and they mounted that transducer with a stainless steel screw and they just went right into the, uh, into the metal on that uh, transducer plate. Well, there's going to be some problems there. Or if they installed some, uh, installed some electrical and they ran a wire somewhere and now it's a loose wire that's just kind of dropping down and touching the aluminum somewhere, that can cause a major problem. So be aware of it. And the sacrificial anodes are the start. But if you have a, a true electrical current that's hitting um, a, a metal piece, you're going to have some issues. And you just want to be very aware uh, in that salt water environment because that salt water is so much more conductive than fresh water is. Okay. So what happens if you leave a pontoon in the water? Well, here's an image. You'll get growth on it. Barnacles in a lot of cases, depending on how much current you have in your area, uh, the depth of the water, the temperature of the water, but there'll be some serious growth when you leave your pontoons in the water, which means if you do that, you have got a lot of work on your hands and a lot of hard work and scraping and potentially puncturing your pontoon, trying to scrape all that gunk off, or the best option is to paint your pontoons. So if you're going to leave your pontoon in salt water for uh, weeks at a time, you're definitely going to want to do this because it only takes a week or two in some areas uh, for this growth to start occurring. Now, painting any boat is a process. Painting an aluminum pontoon uh, is a, a very specific process. You're going to want to sand it. You're going to want to prime it. You're going to want to put on the epoxy coat the copper free paint and then you're going to want to reapply every year 
And a key piece to this is never paint your sacrificial anodes. Remember, those anodes are there to protect. And if you paint them, you totally um, take out their, their benefit. So um, the sand prime coat paint reapply, that's a, a basic. You want to make sure you follow the recommendation. But the key is don't use any bottom paint that has copper or that has any metal in it that's going to cause a major problem and that paint itself if you don't apply it properly can cause little pinholes in your pontoon and it can cause your pontoon to take on water and your boat to sink so if you're doing it yourself pay close attention to the type of material that you're using the instructions for that material and make sure that it's for an aluminum pontoon if you're hiring somebody to do it make sure they do it properly make sure that they you know what process they're going to be using what material they're going to be using where they're going to be using it the temperature has to be just right can't be too hot can't be too cold can't be too humid all of those things come into play when you're painting a pontoon and the other thing you want to do is you'll want to do it about an inch above the water line. You don't need to paint the whole tube. Uh, just paint about an inch or so above the water line. Tape it off. Uh, prepare it. Paint it. And then you're ready to go. Okay. So I mentioned a warning at the beginning of this. Pontoons in salt water can be a, a lifetime of good times. There's also an added danger when you're running in salt water and that is that the conditions can vary dramatically than being even on on a busy lake that it's only going to get so bad on a lake but in the ocean uh in, in some of the bays and some of the inlets you can get some pretty big buildup of the waves and the way a pontoon is designed it can be very comfortable in waves up to a foot or so foot and a half maybe even up to two feet if you're a competent driver you start getting bigger waves than that and what's going to happen is you're likely going to take waves over the bow you can see in this picture this really nice pontoon is taking a big one over the bow and what happens when that wave comes over the bow well it's a flat floor it just pushes you down as that water continues to come on it's likely going to bash through that front gate that you have i, I was recently at a uh, a resort a margaritaville resort and they had about 20 bennington pontoons that were rentals and i bet 75 percent of them had the door smashed in the aluminum out or just the door completely taken off in for repair because they had taken big waves over the bow they didn't keep that nose up and, and they were in conditions that they shouldn't have been or weren't competent drivers to handle conditions that they were in. So remember, pontoons can go out in choppy water, but you don't want to get caught in a storm. You don't want to get caught in big swells. You don't want to take it out in the open ocean if you are not a competent, competent driver. And if you go more than a mile or two offshore, you would better pay attention to the weather because it can come up quick and you can get yourself and your family and your friends in a lot of, lot of trouble. So be very, very cautious with that um, and make sure that you understand how your pontoons operate. If you are in heavy chop, keep that nose up, keep the weight in the back of the boat. Don't have everybody sitting up in the bow and um, you can avoid taking on those big waves in the foot to foot and a half, even two foot water. Um, but if you start getting above that, you see that the weather is going to be coming up. Take, take precaution for sure. So maintenance and cleaning, just like any boat in salt water, there's a little bit extra that you have to do because of the salt. The first thing is every outing, you're going to want to wash all surfaces with fresh water and not just a dribble of fresh water but something that's got some pressure behind it if you look at these at these images you can see the m brackets you can see the fence rail butts up against the aluminum fencing you can see the bolts and the cross members and the bracing all of those things are susceptible to gathering that salt water on it and can be a source of corrosion so you want to make sure that you rinse all of that off and spray it down with a good heavy spray on the fencing, the ladder, the interior, the bimini top and the supports, your engine, your cowling. And if you're trailering it, you want to make sure that you rinse down those trailer bunks as well and that you don't have carpeted trailer bunks because that's going to saturate with that salt water and cause pitting and corrosion. You want to use the plastic coated 
um, on the on a board uh, on a two by four, two by six, whatever whatever you're using with drain channels, so that water can easily drain away and eliminate that corrosion with a freshwater wash down. Uh, you get rid of that salt. Um, there, there are a few other things besides a plastic coated, but just something that's not going to hold water and hold that salt. And then often you're going to want to flush your engine. If it's an outboard for sure, you can see the little earmuffs there. There'll be a, a link in the description to Amazon where you can pick up those earmuffs. You can really get them at any supply store, marine supply store. And if it's a stern drive, it's that much more important to flush your engine every time you use it. Um, leaving a stern drive pontoon in the water to me is just asking for a world of trouble um, with maintenance and issues that come up. But make sure that that gets flushed frequently, if not every time out. And then also inspect the entire boat for corrosion and for rust. If you've got some electrolysis, some of that galvanic corrosion that's starting, it can take off very quickly and cause major, major problems. And unfortunately, most pontoon warranties, they don't cover that saltwater corrosion. Um, I haven't gone through in detail everybody's, but I know it's a common uh, and common out to have in these pontoon boat warranties is that corrosion is not covered. Okay, so a couple things that you need to know about the cleaning and maintenance. That it, it's some simple things, but very, very important things to know about pontoons in salt water. Again, you can pick up your toolkit, boatbuyersecretweapon.com slash toolkit. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. If you've got something I missed or something that you want to add, an experience that you had about um, your pontoon in salt water, uh, let me know. Would love to hear it in the comments. I usually respond within a couple of days. You can also grab um our our special program that we have to ensure that you don't overpay for your pontoon just go to boatbuyerssecretweapon.com slash save for all of the details on that there's a quick little video um youtube's recommended a few videos and of course subscribe so you can get all of our updates thanks for listening and we'll talk to you next time